All right. I got this from my injury when I was about four years old. Kind of embarrassing story. So I was telling my wife that I'm seeing comments from people all over the Caribbean. So let me know what island or country you're representing from in the comments below. And right, I've been seeing the comments on transformation. Dozens of comments within the last half day. So let's get this transformation started right now. Transformation, transformation. So CXC has transformation in a few categories. There's the reflection, rotation, and enlargement. Those are like the basics coming along from form one coming up. Um, in reflection, you need to know the axis of the axis of reflection and rotation. You need to know the center point for the rotation. In enlargement, you'll need to know the scale factor. So you need to understand some things in those topics to be able to do it properly. And um, then there's translation which we normally use a vector to represent the translation and some people call it glide um, then and these two can come early up in your paper then you have combined transformation which can come early as well which is normally um, the combined transformation is normally like when they join up this translation and they join up reflection so they will call it a glide a glide reflection a glide reflection and finally we have matrix transformations so this is what i want to do in this video i hope it doesn't go too long because when things run over 10 minutes people will get distracted and end up watching Nicki Minaj latest music video and them kind of thing those study Chong Li and you have maths on wednesday Chong Li all right so the matrix j that represents okay so we're starting off with matrix transformation right the matrix j equal this this matrix looks this matrix looks a little familiar represents a single transformation all right, so this is matrix transformation. Now, the thing with matrix transformation, a lot of people think this is a very hard topic. Why is it not hard? The only problem with matrix transformation is that you probably wasn't introduced to it because it's a, it's a topic that teachers normally get to at the ending of it. So you maybe had it rushed. And by the way, it has been coming easier and easier over the past 10 years. Easier and easier. Every time like the question comes, it comes easier. And one more thing, it rarely comes. It comes like one in five years. Like one out of five, it will see this thing show up. And it like January papers especially. The image of the point P on the transformation is 5, 4. Determine the coordinates of P. Okay, what you need to realize about matrix transformation. Matrix transformation just means take a matrix and multiply it by whatever is the transformation matrix. That's it. That is it. Take the matrix and multiply by the transformation matrix. If you know matrix multiplication, you already know matrix transformation. It's just to put the ideas into practice. Alright, so listen carefully. The image of the point P under transformation is this. So, we transformed P and we got J. This is the 2 by 2 transformation matrix. This is the point P that we want to find and this is the answer. That's how transformation is. I hope you understand matrix multiplication because you need to have an idea of matrix multiplication to do this, right? Alright, so let me show you the two ways you can do this. Both ways involve you setting up this transformation multiplication scene thing here. This is the matrix that doing the transformation. This is the point that was transformed. This was point what? Point P. Let me just write a P here so you know that this is this is P, right? This is the transformation matrix. Um, and out of this came and out of this was booted point G J was 5, 4, right? so this is the setup here let me just explain it again for those who are brand new to this when you multiply and you go row by column so 0 by X by negative 1 by Y must be equal to 5 which means Y is negative 5 I'm kind of solving it already here right? so once again this matrix is being multiplied by this guy to give me the new image this was the initial and this is the image this is the object and this is the image whatever way you want to look at it we transform P into J by multiplying it by the transformation matrix I don't know how else to say it again so in method 1 I'm going to multiply this row by this column and this should be equal to 5 the first row by the first column must be equal to 5 so that's 0x plus negative 1 by y 
must be equal to 5. This is how it works, right? 0 by x, 0 by x, negative 1 by y must be equal to 5. Look back at matrix multiplication, make sure you can do that. This gives me negative y is equal to 5, y must be equal to negative 5. So this is like negative 1y, negative y, same thing. Similarly, 1x plus 0y is equal to 4. This means this is going out. So x is equal to 4. So the coordinate is 4, negative 5. And that's that method. So I just multiplied and solved my little linear equations there. The next method involves using the inverse. This method a little extra, but... You know, people normally, this is actually the normally used method, right? Because it's matrices we're talking about here. 0, 0, negative 1. So I just rewrote the equation, the matrix equation set up here. Now I'm going to bring across this matrix. And when you bring across the matrix, across the equal sign, you know, it needs the inverse. So the inverse will be... 0, negative 1, 1, 0. So that's how the inverse of that matrix looks. You can actually go and find the inverse of this matrix using the adjoint determinant method if you want. But it's okay if you completely memorize that. And there's a list of stuff that you could memorize if you want to. But I'm telling you, you don't need to memorize anything really for this. You can just use matrix multiplication. Alright, so multiplying this out, 0 by 5, 1 by 4. And... Then you'll do this one, negative 1 by 5 and 0 by 4. So you still need to come down and do some multiplication here. So in the end, you're going to end up with 0 plus 4 and negative 5 plus 0. What are that looking like to you? 4, negative 5. That's xy, which is the same thing as method 1. Alright, so we just found the coordinates of P. So now we need to write down a matrix H of size 2 by 2. A 2 by 2 matrix which does an enlargement of scale factor 3. Right, so you want it to multiply by you want it to multiply everything by 3, scale factor 3. I can tell you what that matrix is gonna be right now. 3 0 0 3. That's the matrix they're looking for. So some of you may be wondering how I pluck that out of the tin air. Remember the identity matrix is this, right? 1, 0, 0, 1. This is the one matrix you need to always know. That's the identity matrix. Then I'm going to go to a clean page to quickly explain this. Alright, you have your identity matrix. 1, 0, 0, 1. If you have a matrix like this, 2, 0, 0, 2, this matrix is like multiplying by 2. In other words, the identity matrix is like 1 times 2 is still 2. The identity matrix doesn't change whatever the other matrix would be. So the answer is still going to be... Two. So if I multiply any matrix by the identity matrix, I will get back. I will get back and multiply any matrix by the identity matrix. So you're going to get back the matrix. But if you wanted to multiply up by two, you could use this. And obviously, if you wanted to multiply up by three, you'll use this. So no working necessary in this question. I have no idea why I'm seeing three marks here. This is a one mark question. Determine the coordinates of the points 5, negative 7 under the combined transformation H followed by G. Alright, let's go back to that clean page so we'll check this out. Alright, so what's happening here, right? I think the point was 5, negative 7. We want to hit this point. Uh, uh, so what we want to do is we want to hit this point under H. We will get an answer. Then we're going to hit this point under G. Where G by G and we'll get our next answer here. So what what is this answer is what they are asking us for. Hope you understand that. So this these are the transformations and it's like a combined transformation, like how you have composite functions. This is like a composite transformation. So as you can see it's not hard. And I know students don't like when math teachers say it's not hard and to them it really hard, but it really is really is not hard. Serious. Yeah, so very quickly what will happen is that we'll have the transformation matrix we'll write that first 3003 because the transformation matrix comes first especially because it's a 2 by 2 matrix you want the 2 by 2 matrix to be first and you multiply that by the point 
and you get your answer. Um, that answer will multiply up, so we get 15, negative 21. This was transformation H, and next up we need to do transformation G. And transformation G was um, 0, negative 1, 1, 0. Anytime it's written with the diagonals like this, it means the coordinates are going to flip around. But we are applying this to the new answer that we got here, to the new answer that we got. So this is 15, negative 21. And when we apply that, it will swap around and the sign will also be eradicated from the top. Hmm, interesting. So this is the answer you are getting here. So we, so they asked to determine the coordinates of the point. So you'll come back and express your answer using the coordinate form. And that's the end of the question there. Now, if you watch this and you still didn't get it and you're worried, don't worry. This was January 2013. I'm going to do two more and try and upload the two more in the same video. This video is going on long. And when I do the two more, you'll see that it, it has gotten easier over the years. Don't X out this question. Try and still be able to do it just in case that you flip a coin and bam, you open and you see matrix transformation. You'll be able to walk over this question. Remember what I'm saying? The working in this question is very easy. Once you get past the initial hurdle of understanding what they're asking you for, two more days still max exam. So you should be hitting it hard. And blessings to all those who write in English on Tuesday.